So how can we know the, the world is ending? Well, Jesus gave us a map. And in your Bibles, if you have them, in Matthew 24, Jesus preaches his, his longest sermon on the end of the world. He actually does two chapters on that. His longest sermon is three chapters long, which is Matthew 5, 6, and 7. But Matthew 24 and 25 is his second longest sermon, and it's about the end of the world. He introduces the end of the world in Matthew 6, thy kingdom come. That's actually what the end of the world is, when God's kingdom comes to earth. The first installment is the second coming of Christ. Uh, the second installment is the millennial rule. Then the, you know, that bang at the end, I show you on that chart when uh, the great white throne is, and then the Lord's kingdom rules. He outlines it right here in Matthew 24. And notice what happens in verse 3. As he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately and said, Tell us, when will these things be, and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? So that's a very biblical topic. What's going to be the sign that you're coming, and what is going to be the sign of the end of the age? And Jesus doesn't give just one. He gives multiple. And what he says is, you're going to see these signs, and they're going to first show up, and then they're going to show up brighter and brighter and more intense, more visible, more kind of widespread, and then, boom, I'm going to come. Now, how he says that is illustrated in the book we're covering. So I'm not teaching Matthew, I'm teaching Revelation, but look at this. What he introduced in Matthew 6, he outlines, and I'll show you the outline in Matthew 24 in just a moment, and then he illustrates it in the seals, the trumpets, the bowls of Revelation. Now where we are, you notice we've moved in our journey through Revelation. Chapters 1, 2, and 3 are the church on earth. Chapter 4 and 5, we saw the church in heaven. Now we're moving to chapter 6 onward, which is the events of the tribulation that fluctuate between heaven and earth. And it goes back and forth, and it's very, very exciting to watch. Uh, you've seen this chart many times, but you see we're in the third section there, the big red block, you know, the tribulation, which um, covers from chapter 6 to 18. But what we see in the outline is, in Matthew 24, verse 8, and then verse 33, then verse 34, we see God giving specific trends. Now, basically this. Matthew 24 is Jesus describing kind of like what the world looks like as he's coming to touch down on the Mount of Olives. So it's kind of like a drone view, one of those drone pictures where it's up above and the drone comes down until it's down on the ground. You know? And that's what Matthew 24 and 25 are. We can see what the world looks like when Christ returns. Now, specifically, this is what he says. All these things are the beginning of sorrows. The Greek word odin. The, the birth pangs or pains. Verse 33, so you also, when you see all these things, now remember what the original question was in verse 3, what, are the sign, what is the sign? And Jesus said there isn't one, there are many, but when you see all of them, he says, no, it's near, verse 33, at the doors. And Mark was talking about the book of James, this teaching through the book of James. Uh, remember what James says to the church in Jerusalem? He says, behold, the judge is at the door. Uh, and what he was talking to was the church. What he's saying is, we're not talking about the return of Christ uh, at that moment. He was saying that the one who wants you to live for him before his return is at the door. He's watching. He wants to see if you are. But look at verse 34. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation, so the generation that sees the launch of the tribulation events are going to live through it because it's Take, that's the word in Revelation, like a tachometer. It means they're rapid. The, the events that happen at the end are very rapid. And he said, the generation will by no means pass away till, and there it is again, all these things. Well, what, what happens to be the things? Well, uh, on the left of that chart is the Olivet Discourse. On the right is the book of Revelation. Remember I said, Jesus outlined the book of Revelation. So in verses 4 and 5, he talks about false Christ. 6 and 7 of Matthew, he talks about the war. Verse 7, famine. Uh, verse 9, death. 9 to 13, martyrdom. And then in his corollary parallel, 
Um, synoptic version of this, which, by the way, is Mark 13 and Luke 21, he talks about the signs uh, that are in the heaven and the kind of like a cosmic earthquake. Did you know that exactly parallels Revelation 6? The first seal is the white horse, which is the false Christ. Second seal is the red horse, which are global wars. The third seal is the black horse, which is global famine. This morning, there was a new... Uh, in, in that, uh, what is the name of that popular stock investing um, thing that, uh, I don't know what it's called. It's the one in everybody that kind of broke uh, stock investing into everybody. It's some app, I can't even remember what the name of it is. But they send out a daily report, and they called the current condition in the earth, listen to this, farm, like F-A-R-M, Ageddon like Armageddon, only they called it Farmageddon. And they said the world is heading toward an incredible time of food scarcity and famine. Wow. Uh, that's the black horse. But that's not the tribulation black horse. That's the beginning of the run-up for it. Uh, the pale horse is death. We've seen that with uh, the pandemic of COVID, which has morphed into all these variants, which it's, it's, it's shown the whole world what, what one uh, pathogen can do to the planet. Can you imagine the pale horse when a fourth of the population of the world? I mean, we're seeing horrors now uh, that are only are going to intensify. Then martyrdom, that's the fifth seal of Revelation, then the sixth seal is just the, the complete explosion of all the end time events. Now here are the trends. Uh, what Jesus said is, uh, this is the beginning, verse 8 of Matthew 24, of the sorrows. The birth pains, what this means is what starts small gets bigger. What, what happens? Well, there's greater visibility. And what we're seeing right now is that is truly an end of days thing that we're seeing, that everybody in the world now knows about everything Within seconds, I mean, a missile hits in Ukraine, someone's filming it on YouTube, or, or I mean on Facebook, or on YouTube Live, or whatever, and it's out there, or they tweet it out, or, you know, they post a picture on Instagram, or whatever. We're seeing visibility of events that is nearly instantaneous. But the Bible says they're going to get more frequent, and they're going to get more intense. See, that's what birth pains are. First, there's this visible, oh, uh, you know, the, the expectant mother goes, oh, you know, she's kind of paralyzed for a second because you can see it. She's feeling this contraction. But the contractions get more frequent, they get more intense, and they have a greater impact, which for birth uh, is the arrival of a baby. Well, look, look at, I mean, these are just great charts. This is the NOAA, National Ocean and Atmospheric Administration of America. They track... The, the big weather events, and this is just right off their site, from 1980 to 2020, NOAA climate. Look at that. That's the droughts, the freezes, tropical cyclones, wildfires, winter storms, severe storms, flooding, the cost, blah, blah, blah. Boom. Just the total number of events. Does that mean there's more events? Not necessarily. We're aware now. What they were not aware of in 1980. We were just at the front end of all this satellite stuff. I mean, we were in the space race and all that, and then all of a sudden, they commercialized all this, and they started watching everything with satellites for crop planning and for weather prediction. I mean, weather prediction is a phenomenal that you, you just have grown up with it. We didn't have that. We had the almanac, a, a paper that was written for a whole year. It told you the weather. Oh, it was very, it was interesting, and, and it had the trends, and they were usually very right. But you didn't look at your phone and say it's going to rain at 9.37. But now with these, the, these satellites, they're seeing all the weather events going on. Look what Jesus said in Luke 21 on the left. Nation will rise against nation, uh, verse 11, great earthquakes, famines, pestilences, fearful sights, signs up in space, the sun, moon, and stars, and on the earth distress, perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, and all of this, because everyone is seeing it, verse 26 says, men's hearts will fail them. Greek word, apsuko, suke, is your spirit. Apo means to pop out. 
people's spirits will pop out. What that means is they'll just drop dead from fear. Because what's going to happen is people are going to be watching these global events and and then, kind of like that strange cloud that went over Alaska over the weekend, they don't know what it was, whether it was a burning meteorite coming down or some space junk or some Soviet or Russian or American vehicle. We don't know what it was, but it was a very, very strange, dark burning across the sky. And it scared people. Over the weekend in Times Square, if you'd been doing open-air evangelism. It was a great time. A manhole cover popped and made a big loud explosion sound and everyone ran for their lives. They thought, they didn't know what it was. The Bible says that as people see these global events, they're going to die of fear. 